It's time to talk PGA Tour golf on Prime Sports Network as the West Coast swing continues on the PGA Tour. Farmers Insurance, Tory Pines. Uh, we'll talk all about that, of course, coming up here, including our picks analysis. Uh, we'll get the latest odds. And also, besides giving our picks on the tournament, we'll talk a little one and done. And that means we welcome in Jared Smola from... Draft Sharks. How's it going, Jared? It's good. This is the real start of the West Coast <laughs> yeah, right? swing, in my in my opinion. Oh, you opinion. don't think we what get... that 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 <laughs> minus twenty eight or whatever it was last yeah, last man. week was a real event? Not my favorite kind of tournament. Not the tournaments I ever have success at. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm happy to be at a a big boy golf course now, Torrey Pines. Yeah, because what we have to look at now with. The, the trend sort of continues in a way because now for now on, it's going to be either, either crazy long shots out of nowhere or John Rom. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the, these trends we've been talking about have been getting hammered. We talked about in, at the Sony guys who had played century winning that didn't come through. We talked last week about long shots winning at Amex that did not come through with John Rom, the heavy favorite winning. So Davis just Thompson that, um, almost did it though. He, he did. Yeah. Just a reminder though that, you know, Trends are trends until they're not trends. So, you know, don't don't lean too heavily on that stuff. Yeah, well, yes, that's true. Um, not sure we've had any 100% trends, though, that have been uh, squashed. <laughs> so there's true. that, which is why, yeah, I mean, 9 out of 10, 12 out of 14. Uh, but, yeah, and trends are always made to be broken, just like streaks. Yep. So it is what it is, but that's why it's about the long season. Because the longer the season goes, the more the trends work. So, or at least it's supposed to be that way. Uh, and, and we hope that it works out that way or else we're going to have a hard time picking uh, winners this year. Uh, all right. So kind of wrap up uh, a very uneventful in a way, even though it was kind of, there was a lot going on, you know, as far yeah. as you didn't really, I mean, you kind of figured it was going to be Rom and Thompson the whole time because it was kind of Rom and Thompson for the last three days. And by the way, that's a trend that did continue. If you take a look at where winners come from and I, and, and I'm able to uh, get that from our, 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 uh, uh, one of our stat sponsors at golf at uh, golfstats.com. You can check that out. We have the link to the description area. You can use, hopefully if you want to sign up for that, uh, just please use the, the code that we have. Uh, and then you go in and you can uh, order uh, a subscription of golf stats. And they even had, cause I, I always check it out. Want to see after the first round, second round, where do winners come from? And for a majority of years, whoever gets off to a really good start, basically at the Amex wins the event. Like you have to, mm. like if you, if you're, you basically have to finish first, like in the top three or four after the first round and like the last seven or eight winners that did that won the event. It's kind of weird, strange that, that would happen at an event with three different golf courses. Yeah. And I think the, you know, the low scoring birdie fest type events usually lead themselves to more turnover at the top of the leaderboard. So that's definitely interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, Rom, Rom did not slam the door shut on that tournament. I mean, he, he let, he did. Thompson hang around. Yes. He let Xander get back into the mix. I mean, you know, Chris Kirk was up. And there were there were guys who had a chance to win because you know Rom didn't go as low on Sunday as he did the previous previous couple of days. I, I was impressed by Davis Thompson though, just to be playing alongside John Rom and you know keep it close, be in the mix. I mean, if that putt drops on seventeen, that banged the pin and, and went out. Um, you know that that tournament could could end differently. Well, he he really lost it on uh, what was it fifteen or sixteen when he had that very makeable birdie putt. With an opportunity to take the lead, he missed it. Once he missed that, I figured it was over. I was like, "You, you yeah. can't miss those." Right. And, and, and to fail, and then I knew it was really over when Rom got the lucky break, where Oof, he he should have gone down the hill, <laughs> and he birdies yeah. the hole. Yeah, I mean, when you know that when that happens, it's it's pretty. It's yeah, over. he yeah he didn't go down the hill, and then his birdie putt like yeah rang around the cup went around the and went cup. in. So he got yeah. he got two breaks there that you know could it really could have saved him like two strokes yeah so actually i'm gonna and again this is this will help us once we're into the tournament but i'm just going to give you an example again checking out golfstats.com where winners come from so at the farmers our event this week interesting enough how about this that the round one leader at the farmers wow 
There's only been one round one leader that went on to win the Farmers since 1988. Well, that that makes sense because this is this is another two course rotation. They play they play the the and Friday Saturday you'll, each guy will play the South course, which is the course everyone knows. The course they have the the you know the U.S. Open was at a couple years ago. By the way, they I also remember, play, it's a Wednesday start, everybody. Yes, yes. Um, they'll also play the North course one of the first two rounds, which is much easier. The North course course plays about two to three strokes easier. Wow. So you. You need to go low on the North course. And I would imagine why that trend you mentioned is the case is because guys go out and play the North course on the, the first round, get out to a lead. And then they have to, you know, play the South course three times in a row. And usually you're going to, you know, drop back in that case. What's, uh, what's SB? Oh, here it is. Four, uh, shots back. That's what it is. Okay. So actually yeah. the, uh, that one pl- player, by the way, that one, after leading the first round, was tied for the lead in 2021, and that was Patrick Reed. Mm-hmm. So, how about this? Winners since 19, excuse me, since 2011, winners have started the, after their first round score, tied for 55th, 17th, 20th, 63rd, 96th, 90th, mm-hmm. 77th, and 113th. So what does that okay, tell so you? You're... Don't worry about what happens in the first <laughs> round. If you have a bit, like unless, you said, again. if you have a bad day because you're on the tough golf course, you can come right back on the easy golf right. course and have a, and have a, and get right back into it. I do think it probably opens up good live betting opportunities. If you have a guy you like that starts yes. on the South course, does not play too well, bet him after the first round, hope he goes low on the North course and he'll be right back in it. Because as soon as you get to the second round, it completely changes. Then, uh, then all of us, like for instance, the 96th, Guy after the first day turned into mm-hmm. the sixth, the second yeah. day. Guarantee he played the south course first and then played the north course. Yeah, right. The hundred and thirteenth turned into the sixth. Yep. By the way, the same guy was Jason Day, who did both of those. Talk about him. I'll we'll talk about him yeah. for sure today. So anyway, so yeah, and then and but and even in after the third round, Luca List was nineteenth going into yeah, the final round last great. week last year. Yeah, he had a he had a great Sunday. That was that was a great. This was a great tournament last year. So really, another heartbreaker for our boy Will. Yeah. So, <laughs> really, there's only how about this? There's only been two final round third going into the final round leaders since 2009. That's strange. Tiger Woods, big surprise, and Justin Rose and Patrick Reed, three of them, since. 2008, I guess, or 2007. That's crazy. You have had, okay, you had 19th, you've had 7th, you had 5th, you've had 13th, you've had 27th. It's a tough It's a tough course. There can be lots of carnage here. Um, it's tough to make birdies. Very good, like you said, forward. very good live betting event. I think so, yep. Last week, so. forget it. And in the future, forget Don't ever bet live betting on the Amex. Unless, you have, unless someone gets a good start, he's first, and you still get good odds. They go, oh, I'm taking that guy. There you go. <laughs> All right. How's the – so one and done You went well for you. Yes and no. Yes and no. Tom, Tom Kim uh, came through. I think he finished tied fifth, so that was nice. Um, and then, man, Cameron Davis. I I was so confident in Cameron Davis. That's, that, that's golf for you. you know. All the numbers lined up for Cameron Davis last week. It seemed like a, a great spot, and then he – Missed the cut. It wasn't even close. I, I was I was watching him on Thursday. He was on the uh, featured group on PGA Tour Live. His first drive settles behind like one of the eight trees on the entire property. <laughs> and his second shot, he has to just like punch out into the fairway. So I was like, oh, it's it's not. Give me one of those days. Week, and that, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. So that's that's what happens. But hey, you know, at least Kim came through. Yeah, so yeah, good. he played well. He bounced. He bounced back, which I, I was not surprised by. Have you noticed whether or not there's a, a few players that have been taken a like a, a, like which players last, have been taken the most right now? Yeah, last week was very spread out. I don't think there was a single guy that was even double digits that was even you know ten percent owned, which is pretty rare. Um, but if you if you go into um, this fantasy golf championships where we play this, you, you can see the percentage of time that um, each player has been picked. Um, so, like, if I were to go, uh, let's see, where is it? Let me get it on. Yeah, my so I, board let's here. see, I can actually sort. So, Sung J M has been used the most. He's been used by twelve percent of teams so far. 
So where do you go for that? So if you go to pick a player and then you can sort by availability. So if so I'm like on the home page, if my home page, what do I go to? I'm on the leaderboard. So go, go to the spot you, where you'd go to, to pick your player for the week. Uh, I don't even know where that is here. Let's see. Yeah, I think you want to be off the leaderboard. You want to go to like my, my entries, I think it is up, up top. Oh, my, oh, no, I can't get in there from there. I don't know. I probably have but to I mean, go in I mean, you know, Yeah, I mean, mo- every other player besides Sungjae is still available for 91 plus percent. So there hasn't been like one guy that's been used a bunch so far. Okay. So, yeah. Speaking of Sungjae, he, he's someone I'm considering this week. Yes. Yeah, I've got three guys I'm down to. And two I'm um, kind of ahead with. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it, I'm either probably going to go with Sungjae M or Justin Rose. And I was thinking about Montgomery wow. because he's just so hot. He's got so many Montgomery. top 15s that even if he doesn't win and you get a top 15 from him, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Montgomery breaks my brain how he plays. <laughs> Why is that? Because he consistently – now, he did – he barely gained on approach last week. And that, you know, if you've been listening to me, you, you know that approach tends to be – the most important stat, you know, strokes gained approach, you know, with your irons, he consistently loses on approach, but he's so good off the tee and he's such a good putter that it doesn't matter. Um, now I, I wonder how sustainable that is that the off the tee stuff is definitely sustainable. Like he's already, you know, one of the better drivers on tour, um, whether the putter can stay as hot as it's been for the past two, three months now. That's well, what we'll have to see. That's what I'm saying. It's like sooner or later, he's going to cool off and then I'm probably never going to take him. So if, right. if I'm thinking yeah. of taking them, this has got to be one of those yeah. weeks. So and this this I think this course is a good fit for him, right? I mean it's a, it's a bomber's course. You got to be long off the tee. He is. Um, let's see. Is he a good? Is he a good Poa putter? He is. Poa is his best putting surface, so that works for him. Um, and he's actually he actually is pretty good around the green too, which is important at Torrey Pines. So I, it's a good fit for him. He has never played here, right? No, he, he sorry, was eleventh last year. Oh, there you go. And he did it off the tee, gained two strokes off the tee. He gained five and a half strokes putting. Man, you, you're just trying, you're trying to convince me of taking him now, which is working. Yeah, Because he was my third point. choice coming in, but I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should go that way. Because M is a guy that I was thinking, I like him this week, but I've got other events that I could still take him at. Yeah. And I could, I could actually, if I needed to, I could still save Sung M all the way to the Wyndham because he's very good at Wyndham. So worst yep. case scenario, I still have events towards the end of the season that I can take Sun JM and feel comfortable with. Um, Rose is just the reason I mentioned him is because of the fact that he has just been very good here the last five years. Mm-hmm. And he's starting to look like he's rounding into form again. But it's still, yep. you know, Montgomery's got more consistency. Yep. So it's a tough one. But yeah, I'm so I'm who are you I'm going with him between... and who? So oh, I haven't decided. I have four guys. I'm still looking at Sung James, one of them. Jason Day is another yes, one who Jason kind of fits Day. the rows. Like Jason Day is like 28 to one in this field, which seems crazy. I'm not going to bet that. But like this seems like a good time to use him for one and done. I'm not sure how popular he's going to be. If he's going to be one of the more popular guys and I, I might not want to take him. But he, he's been awesome at this course and he actually is playing well. He played well at the. Amex last week. Um, so I'm considering those two guys. I'm considering Tony Finau. I think Tori is a perfect fit for his game. And then I'm considering Max Homa as well, um, who is just – he's just a West Coast guy. He, he puts best on POA. His wins have come on the West Coast. So um, I'm considering Homa as well. Yeah, there are two more average purse events, but then we're going to have back-to-back. Matter of fact, we're going to have four out right. of five – $20,000 purse events coming up after this week, starting with the Phoenix open. So yeah. So again, I think, I think you don't want to use a ROM here. I mean, you, oh, you, no. you could, but I mean, I mean, you know, if, if you, if you knew, Ram yeah, was I mean, win, you, you better win though. Right? Yeah. That's the thing. That's I mean, the thing. You, like, you even, can't even finish even, second. You got to win. Right. That's like, I'm not even upset. I didn't use ROM last week. Cause I think he got like 1.2 mil for, for winning that. <laughs> Hopefully, I can find the spot where he's going to win one of these big events, and I can get you know two, two and a half mil out of him, and then I'm I'm beating all the people that used them last week, anyways. Yeah, just taking a look at uh, did I put it here for 
Yeah, um, yeah. With Finau, I mean, there, the thing with Finau is there's so many, like, even the higher priced events, you have to consider whether or not because he's good at Genesis. Do right. you think he's going to break through and win a major? Are you going to take him at the Masters, the Open Championship, PGA? So, yep. yeah, that's the thing about. Uh, yeah, he's almost. He's almost too good to use at this, this event. Week. That'd be the that'd be the knock against using Fina this week. Yeah, and then M, uh, actually Homa you mentioned. So he's been very good at three big time events, and he's won one of them. That was Genesis, and he's yeah. also good at Memorial and Arnold Palmer. So yeah, Homa Homa on tough golf courses. Those are three tough courses. This is a tough course. I think I, this is a, a good fit for Homa. All right. So uh, that's we, we have a lot to decide on there as far as mm-hmm. which way to go uh, with the farmers. But I actually I, I have five guys on my list of the farmers when I looked at all of my options and where players I think play well and where I could fit them in. And, and, and the five guys I have are Day and Rose with M, Rom, and Zalatoris. But I'm not taking yeah. Rom and Zalatoris in this event. And you, you're thinking a day. I'm thinking of Rose and M. So, yeah. And it's interesting because when you're rooting, a, like, it, when you're in the event and you see it's Rom against Thompson and you don't have either guy, <laughs> who are you rooting for to win? Probably oh, Thompson. Thompson, right? Because sure. nobody has Thompson. For sure. Yeah. Well, only yeah. a few may have Rom, but still, that's somebody somebody that yeah. might get him. So. Yep, exactly. All right. Uh, now, let's get into this week's event. So, actually, before we do that, I'm going to take a look at some of your stats. So, let's see. Which ones will I start off with? Let's – let me see here. Um Okay, let's start off with the first one, which is the, let's see, yeah, there it is. That is the top 10 event history. So we've got that. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw them all on the board here. You've got your top 10 in proximity from 200 yards over the last year, and top 100 on par fours between 450, 500 the last year. So taking a look at these top 10s, tell us a little bit about I mean, we've got the obvious, which is the top 10 event history over the last five years. But talk a little about the other two. So I can see why you took Kurt Kitayama, because he's in both of those. And uh, good to see Sung Jae Im in two of those. So that's nice, because he is, uh, I think he's my top pick. And Excellent. And not a surprise to see uh, some of the other names, of course. Okay, interesting. What are you most surprised about? Any player on there that surprises you the most that they're on either any of those lists? On both? Last week, which is, you know, off the tee plus a pro. plus yards um so he's definitely again i don't i don't think he's he can win this week but if you're into the top 10s into the top 20 bets i think alex smalley is a guy to to keep in mind okay so 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's uh, pop up also our picks. There's the pick ticker coming up as we go over our picks. We'll shoot that along there so you can take a look at what we're going with. Of course, we've got the odds, the current odds. It's Tuesday. It's early Tuesday afternoon. Again, the event starts on Wednesday. So that's tomorrow morning, West Coast time. So that's probably by the time this is available to viewers, you're, you, you, you have 12 hours maybe. So it's going to be quick. Um, as far as trends that I found out, by the way, before we get into this, because we kind of started the show with the whole trend deal, uh, internet and and uh, we have seen that on the West Coast, especially at some of the events prior, that a lot of U.S. players have dominated. But for the most part, a lot of that is because of just history of the U.S. players mm -hmm. being the top players here in the United States. So it's taken a while. But do note that international players have won five of the last eight of uh, Farmers Insurance Opens. But how about this? This shows you about the tough golf course. 19 of the last 27 winners have won majors. Now, Tiger's yep. got, what, seven of those uh, <laughs> right. wins, I think, here. But still, uh, that just shows you that you got to have a makeup. And also, nine of the last 12 were ranked in the top 35 before winning here. So the combination of yep. majors, <laughs> top 35, this is not like last week's event at all. This is the cream usually. Now, Lucas yeah. won last year. So he, he broke the trend last year winning. I think he was 151st and had never won a PGA Tour event ever. So he, he broke those trends last year. So we'll see if that kind of continues. But if that just was a one-year kind of blip, mm -hmm. then maybe we get back to like the, the really top guys coming back yeah. up this week. Yeah, and just to go along with that, three of the last five winners and five of the last eight have been 25 to one or shorter in the odds. And and none of the last eight winners have been higher than 80 to one. So I think, you know, this, this unlike last week, and I know it didn't work out last week, but unlike last week, this is not a week to be betting a ton of long shots. No, no, no. Focus more, focus more on the top of the card. Yes. Okay. John Rahm is just way too much of a favorite. At four, he's a he's almost a tiger territory, at <laughs> yeah. four to one because he's he's won four of his last seven events. I guess he's got seven straight mm -hmm. top tens with a runner up and four wins, and he he's dominated the golf course, all top thirties in six yeah, appearances, I mean, and seven of those should be five of those are, are seventh or better, and he's got four top fives, a runner up, and a win. So that combination is why he's four to one. Yeah, I mean, it's a kind of a perfect storm. He's playing as well as he can play, and it, this is, I think, his, his best golf course now. It's interesting. Rom usually doesn't play the week after winning. Um, now he, he, he Obviously, he's not going to skip this event because, again, it's like it's his favorite course on tour. But um, and, and it's a, you know, it's a, we talk about, we talk about short weeks in football when, you know, teams play on Thursday. It's a short week for these golfers that played on Sunday and are going to be, you know, turning around and playing on Wednesday. So, I mean, those are the arguments against, John Rahm, um, he could easily go out and win this thing too. Good point. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not betting him at, at that number. All right, and then you have Shoffley at eleven to one. Uh, Justin Thomas and Tony Fino are at twelve to one. Shoffley has been hit or miss here, and by the mm -hmm. way, there's a lot of that here. It's a lot of hit or miss here. It's a lot of players who have had good runs and terrible runs here. So it's mm -hmm. a very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to, to see. Yeah, okay, this guy just seems to always play well here. It doesn't happen a lot other than John Rahm, apparently. Um, but Shoffley's one of those guys. I mean, he has three top 35s, a runner-up a couple years ago, but he has four missed cuts. Uh, Justin's only played here three times, two top 20s and a 10th, also missed the cut. And Tony Finau has been very solid here with seven top 25s out of eight appearances. So that's, again, a reason why you were thinking of taking him in your one and done. And four top tens, two top fives, and a runner-up. Yeah, so, you know, Xander, this course should be perfect for, for Xander. He is a long, straight driver. He has a good around the green game. Poa is his best putting surface. It's actually, you know, it's a home game for Xander. He went to, I think he's from around here. He went to college at San Diego State. So, it's, you know, it's a home game. It seems like he kind of he has kind of figured out the course. You know, he has a second and a 34th is it in his last two appearances at this event. And then he also came seventh at the U S open here in 2021. So he, he seems to have kind of figured it out. I think he's an interesting bet. Um, he's a bit too short for me again, Finau, 
I think is a perfect fit here. He's played well here. Um, Thomas, Thomas is the one. And I, I think Thomas is a better player than Xander or Fina, but I don't love this course for him. He can get a little wild off the tee and you don't really want to be playing out of the rough too often here. Um, I just, I, you know, I, I don't, this, this isn't my favorite spot for, for a Thomas win. He could come out and win, but um, I, I'd rather bet him elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's way too many uh, events for Justin Thomas to look at. Uh, then to one and done him here, but yeah, even overall, yep. even with our picks, I, I think there are other players. I see what you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not like he's necessarily on a good roll either. Sure. So, yep. um, all right, Zala. Oh, by the way, I just want to remind everybody too that our our handicapping segment each week is brought to you by PlaybookSports.com, and of course, you can also check out the Playbook Experts YouTube channel. So Mark Lawrence, of course, Hall of Fame handicapper. So he has his weekly show. He records it every Wednesday, so you can check that out. And uh, he comes on this channel with, uh, with, with myself every Thursday uh, for NFL and college football. And we'll be doing college hoops real soon. Okay, so we got the two 16-to-1 shots who we've both picked. You have one, and I have one. And we've kind of swapped because uh, Morikawa <laughs> is on my fantasy team and Zalatoris is on yours, uh, yeah. both 16 to one and both have interesting trend lines. Zalatoris has an interesting trend line in this event. He's been better all three times, including second last year. So he's kind of, is that his peak or has he got room for a win this year to really stretch out that trend and like put an end to it with an exclamation point. Now Morikawa, meanwhile, is working on a really good trend line on the season overall. And over his last five events, each has been better than the other, including a sixth and a second in his last two, with the two coming at, unfortunately, the century, which should have been a win. Uh, so yep. that, I remember we said, how would he react to that? That's what we would be interested in. We also wondered with Zalatoris' his injury. How does he react? So it is interesting that he, and by the way, Morikawa's only played here once, and that was a couple of years ago. He finished 21st. It's interesting that even though we have question marks with these two players, we've both taken them as, as, as two of our better picks. Um, almost like, okay, well, We'll we'll bank we'll, we'll see you know what let's let's gamble on whether or not Morikawa can get over that century collapse yeah. and we'll gamble on whether Zalatoris is truly healthy. Yeah, I, I'm always gonna bet on Morikawa. I think he's gonna bounce back from that that disaster at um, Century. Um, I mean, the guy the guy's won two majors. He, he's super young. I I, I want to be on his side um, now. This isn't a perfect course for Morikawa. You know, he's 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 not a, he's not a long driver of the golf ball. He's he's 115th in driving distance. Okay, but he's seventh he's seventh in fairways game. So he's gonna hit fairways, and he is awesome on those long irons. Um, 17th in this field from 200 plus. Second in this field from 175, 200. There's actually only four other players in the field that are top 20 in both of those distance buckets. So like he's the guy I want to bet on from these long iron shots. So even if he's not you know bombing these drives. He's going to be in the fairway. He's going to be good on the long irons. I like that. Morikawa also um, first in this field in strokes gained on difficult courses, which I think this is going to play difficult this week. So I like that fit for him. And you know, putting usually the issue with Morikawa, Poa, and you know these greens are, are Poa for the first time this you know year that we've been on Poa. Um, Poa is his least bad putting surface. I'm not going to say he's a good Poa putter. But he's, he's not as bad on Poa as he is on Bent or Bermuda. Um, you mentioned the 21st here in 2020. He also came fourth here at the U.S. Open in 2021. So he, he does have some some nice course history. And he is your top pick. And Zalatoris is my second choice. Yeah. So, yeah, what about so – By the way, I wanted to yeah, – sorry, I wanted, I wanted to mention, I know we talked about this offline um, the other week, but if you're, if you're making golf bets, get – on the sports books on Monday morning, because I got Morikawa at 22 to one on Monday morning. The, the numbers do not improve in our favor throughout the week. They just get slashed um, for, for whatever reason. I mean, the books are kind of stingy with this stuff. So if, if, you, if you're serious about this, get on there Monday morning, get your bets in. That, that's when you're going to get the best numbers. Yeah. Cause the fields come out when like Friday or Saturday fields come out. Yeah. Friday sounds right. That now the books don't post numbers until Monday morning. 
it's usually from my experience it's usually like eight or nine a.m on monday morning they'll start to come out and that's really when you want to get on there again i I do all this research on sunday yeah that's the point ready ready to go on on monday morning don't wait for the odds to come out to do the research yep makes a lot of sense and it's gonna be a lot easier too once football season's over for sure so (laughs) all right uh next up 22 to 1 we have m homa and day and just like you were saying though just keep in mind that all these odds we're looking at odds from 24 hours ago so they i'm sure they're changing on multiple sports books, but in yep. Homa and day, and these are all good, good options. Matter of fact, you you've taken Homa. I've taken yep. M and we were both thinking about Jay's and day. So M we'll start with him. He's trending really well at this event. He's been better all four appearances. He is uh, coming in after a sixth last year here. So uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. I can get a top five this week. If I go one and done with him, Maybe that's exactly mm-hmm. what you're thinking as well. Um, he's been okay, but that, you know, as far as overall, his, 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 he did miss a cut a few weeks ago, but he's been okay as far as he's always, yeah. he's like a top 20 guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know exactly when he's actually going to go out and win, uh, but this is a pretty good week for him to possibly do it. Yeah, he does. I'm actually looking at his like stat profile. It's very similar to Morikawa, where he's not long off the tee. But he's very accurate. He's 12th in fairways gained. He's another guy that's really good on these long approaches. He's third in proximity from 200 plus over the last two years. He's also, Sungjae is also really good around the green, which tends to be important at Torrey Pines because you do have these long approach shots. They are pretty small green. So you're going to miss greens. You're going to have to get up and down, which Sungjae can do. So I, w- I was really between Sungjae and Homa for my last bet. And I just sided with Homa, but I think, uh, I think Sungjae, there's a good case to be made for him too. Yeah. Homa is uh, another, if you look at it, he really is. Again, one of those hit or miss guys here. He has two top 20s and six appearances with one top 10. Four yep. of those missed cuts, but his last three years, he's, he did miss the cut last year, but he was 18th and 9th before that. So he's, yep. he's a little bit more of a gamble in my mind uh, than, than, than him. I think he's definitely a bigger mm-hmm. gamble than him. Yep. Maybe not so of day because still – the idea of taking day even in a one and done format, you're just going to be sweating bullets for four days. <laughs> you know, you're going to, you can wake yeah. up and you can be in like top five on Sunday and you're just going, please don't tell me. I don't want to hear anything about him. <laughs> back, know, yeah. I, I, I don't want to hear it, please. Anyway, what about those two, those final two? Yeah. Yeah. Day's been, Day's been saying the back issues are kind of behind him. I, uh, I hope so. Nice to hear. And he, he is playing well, um, you know, 18th, at the Amex last week, gained off the tee, gained on approach, had a really nice putting week, but he, he will do that. He obviously has a good around the green game. So his game does fit this course, I think, pretty well. Oh, yeah. He obviously has the results to, to prove that. So, again, I think 22-1, um, to 1, even 28-1 to 1 on day, is that's just too short for me to bet. But I do think this is a good spot to use him in one and done. Um, Homa is the bet I went with. I'm with I, like, I think Sungjae is safer than Homa, but I think – Homa has a better chance to win the event. Like I, we talked about it on the draft show when Homa's in the mix on Sunday. I, I like having my money on, on Homa down the stretch. Um, he played well at the century last time out third there. Like you said, has some good showings at the farmers and he, he checks a lot of these stat boxes I'm looking for too. 25th in driving distance, 10th in those approach shots from 200 plus yards, 38th around the green. So he's pretty good around the green and he's the ninth best putter in this field on POA. Uh, that's his best surface. So he kind of he has a well-rounded game, does everything well. And again, I, I like his chances to win when he's in the mix. Yeah, Day, I, I'm with you. I, I as I'm like, you know, I'm thinking. I thought Day's odds, quite frankly, were just going to be a little bit better than Justin Roses. I figured he was going to be like 35, was, 40 to one. Me too. I, I and then I saw 22 to one. I said, what? I mean, come on, you can't do that to us. 22 to one. I mean, he's not. He hasn't done anything for a couple of years. So fu- and by the way, he's only had, even though, like you said, he's playing well, he's got five top 25s in his last six. He's got one top 10. Yeah. He hasn't really been competing Whoops. for wins. So, but he's been so good here. Five top fives, runner up, two wins. He's coming off. He is playing better. I don't know. And he was third here last year. So, I mean, yeah, the books, the books are being stingy this week, I think, with these lines. You know, there wasn't a lot. That really popped out to me as being good value. Uh, I'm with you. I was hoping to 
to log on on Monday morning and get day at like forty to one, I would have I would have probably bitten at that number. But I'm not I'm not taking him at you know, twenty five or whatever he is. Uh, Montgomery uh, is twenty eight to one. McNeely's thirty to one. Again, Montgomery, 12 top 15s in his last 13 professional events between the PGA and KFT Tours. He's yet to win a professional event, by the way. We're not even talking oh. KFT. It's Europe, nothing. He hasn't won anything. But he's consistent. <clears throat> he's just a consistent machine, and he's trending in the right direction coming off the fifth-place finish last week, even though he, did, he mm. kind of fell down the stretch last week which was a little disappointing. But again, 11th year last year, McNeely has played here four times. He's got three top 30s, and he's on a run of six straight top 30s overall, including a seventh his last time out at Sony. I was even putting McNeely into my picks category. I almost put him in there. It's, I just couldn't fit him. I, th- I thought I had enough, but I put money on McNeely this week. Well, he's another guy that I'd like to bet at. 40 or 50 to one, but not 30, 30 to, to one. one. Um, that, that's, that's just me. Yeah. I actually he should not Montgomery. be the same odds as Montgomery right now. No, I'm with you there. Um, I actually didn't realize that Montgomery has yet to win though, which is, I'm not going to say I'm worried about it cause he's still so young, but you like, like to see some experience closing out tournaments, especially he gets to 17 last week and he just totally shanks one into the water. Um, so that, that's a little concerning. It, it, Montgomery's another guy. I can say it's about a lot of guys this week, just a little too short for me. Um, you know, 35, 40 to one, I'd be interested. This is a good fit for him. He's super long off the tee. Good putt. He's a good, uh, Poe is his best putting surface. And he's a good putter anyways. And this is his best putting surface. So I mean, if he can dial in the irons a little bit, you know, he, he's probably going to be in the mix again this week. Uh, by the way, do we, before we make our final picks, our one and dones, do we care which course they start off with? Like, do we want them to get off to a good start? As opposed, even though we've shown the the, the history that says you can get off to a bad yeah. start, you can still cut, but it's still, you, you got the pressure of being so far back. If you start sure. off, do we want to feel that pressure potentially? Is that something that if we're, if we're flipping the coin on one or two players, should yeah. we look at what they're, what they're starting off with? I think it probably matters more for some guys than others. Like it might matter more for Montgomery who hasn't won yet. You know, I, I don't think I don't, I'm not worried about it mattering for Tony Finau or Max Homa who have experience winning. I don't think they're going to panic if they're, you know, okay. six shots back after playing in the South. I don't know. Are, are there any, have you seen any trends do like, do winners usually start? It seems like, it seems like from the numbers you were saying that winners usually start on the South course. Oh, I mean, they must. I mean, I haven't, I didn't look and find out where, but if yeah. they have to, I mean, based on right. your, so. Yeah, and 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 you were saying with Montgomery, and I think this is definitely a fact. Any player that does not have a history of winning in some way, shape, or form, you mm-hmm. owe you you're better off being in an event like this where most guys come from behind, because sure. you don't really want Montgomery to be in the lead, sure. because history says if you're in the lead in this event, you're not going to hold on and win. And I don't want Montgomery in the lead when he's number one before in an event <laughs> that's not usually uh, conducive right. to yeah. winning with the lead. So I could definitely see this as another plus if you think of Montgomery in a one and done fashion where you say, all right, yeah, I could see him coming from behind. He could be 15th going into the and he doesn't feel any pressure and he goes out and has a really good Sunday. Yep. Agreed. Uh, Matsuyama is 35 to one. Sagala Davis are 40 to one. Don't really like the Galler Davis this week or Matsuyama, really. He's only had three top 20s and nine appearances with the third in 2019. Yeah, Hideki is the one guy where I think the number is actually fair. I mean, 35 to one's not bad. Yeah. Isn't he always, isn't it strange that he seems to be always 35 to one? <laughs> yeah. And I, I bet him quite a bit at that number. I, I, I thought about him this week, didn't quite get to him. He, he has a lot of just okay finishes here. Like he hasn't missed a cut. He's made the cut in six straight appearances, but only has one top 10 over that span. And Hideki has lost strokes off the tee in six straight events now. So that's a little concerning because, you know, longer term, he's he's one of the better drivers at the golf ball. But for, he, he seems to be in a funk off the tee right now. And this is this is not a course to, you know, be spraying it. So that, that's, that was kind of enough to keep me off of Hideki this week. You know, Hideki's a guy that I am – He's in my final like three or four, my early final three or four of guys who I'm holding off for the U.S. Open. And the other guys would be Shoffley, Scheffler, 
and then you, you got to throw in maybe a Rory and so forth. And there's Alatoris, but he's in there. He's like, he may not even, even be a top five. He might be a top three for me right now. So I'm going to kind of hold off on him a little yeah. while anyway, because if he wins another major, I think that's going to be mm-hmm. the major he wins. Mm-hmm. Is that is that because you like him at that specific golf course? That's the only thing, you know, the specific courses. That's obviously the trick that you can't throw into there. But I still tend to, if I see somebody who does really well on U.S. Open golf courses, yes, I'm not going to worry too much about. They, oh, but they're playing on this one. Yeah, you know, they set they set all those courses up the same. Yes, <laughs> they're all they're all super long with super long rough. Yes, so it, it, it you know it tailors to the, the same players every year. Okay, now we get to uh, some of the really long shots, uh, and then we got Rose is one of them at fifty to one. I'll just throw the ones that I because not a lot of them. I mean, once mm-hmm. we get to yeah. this point, I didn't have a lot of long shots, but Rose was one yep. of them at fifty to one. JJ Spawn was another one at sixty to one. Uh, what, uh, let's start with Rose though. He's got six top twenty fives and twelve appearances, but. He's got four top tens in his last five years. And we're talking about a guy who hasn't actually played all that well the last couple of years. He's got top uh, two top fives in that span. He, got, he has a win at 2019. He was sixth last year. And remember when we talked about him ending the season pretty decently, the thing was going into last week was, all right, well, well let's see how he kind of plays for the first time in a few months. Plays pretty well. Mm-hmm. Finishes in the top 30. That's why I think he's a pretty solid play, especially if you're looking for long shots. I think he's, to me, he's yep. easily the, the best long shot to, to, to gamble with. Yeah, I hit Rose here in 2019. I think that was one of my first wins ever. It's kind of when I started. In 2019? To get um, yeah, so I have a, yeah, so I have a soft spot for him. Um, you know, it's there's honestly nothing I can point to in his stats that say he's a good fit here, but you look at the results and that's kind of like, for whatever reason, the guy plays well here he likes the course i, I do think 50 is a, is a fair number on on rose uh spawn by the way eight top 25s in his last 13 four straight top 15s and he's coming in off a of 12th he was a fifth before that i think that was at the century and he does have four top 35s and six appearances with one top 10 but he's missed two miss he's missed two cuts over the last four years <laughs> but as a long shot i think that he you know he did catch my eye a little bit uh, mm-hmm. What about this area here between 50 and 90 to one? Uh, Kitayama is your top guy, right? He is. Um, I just, I got to say, I came close to betting Cam Davis again. And if he wins, it's going to break my heart. Um, he a- he actually checks a ton of boxes here. Well, just, uh, he's obviously, him, he's... just in case. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, oh yeah, we'll see if I end up getting there. I mean, he's he's seventh in this field in driving distance. He, he pounds the ball. He's seventeenth in proximity from two hundred plus yards. He's eighth in proximity from one seventy five to two hundred. Um, now he's not a good around the green player. Um, yeah, but he's never had that, a good finish here though. That's, he's that's sort of like the anti Justin Rose. He like he, he doesn't. He looks maybe good on the golf course, but he doesn't finish well on yep. the golf course. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I, I've seen some like sixty six to one still out there on Cam Davis, which is. Um, tempting me but I, I i haven't he was he was bad he was bad last week he was just really bad last week so it's you know tough for me to see him going from that performance to you know winning this tournament i'll give you another trend that might matter too and because we just talked about davis his best finish was 32nd in five appearances nine of the last 11 first time winners here had scored a previous top 10 here and six of the last nine first-time winners scored a top 10 the year before on this golf course winning here. So yep. what that's telling you is, historically, you do, you want to have a little success here first before you win. Sure. Okay. And he does have the Aussie thing going for him, though. You know, he does. Jason Day, Jason Day and Mark Leishman have won here. So there you go. Something to the Aussie, Aussie thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, so Kitayama. So, so he's yeah. 90 to 1, right? Yeah, and we just talked about the, the stats just line up too well for me not to take a chance on him at 90 to one. And again, I, I really tried not to put too much money on long shots this week. I do think you want to stay, you know, 50, 60 to yeah. one and lower, but yeah, Kitayama 11th in driving distance, um, 28th in, in strokes gain approach, including again, top 10 in both proximity from 200 plus yards and from 175 to 200. Um, he's also 39th in strokes gain around the green. So he has a short game too. So it seems like it should be a good, fit for him um you know whether or not he can actually win we'll see but I, again he's another guy where if you're into the top 10 and, and top 20 type bets i think he's a, he's a really good fit for those 
Uh, other notable players around here, you got uh, Keegan Bradley, a major winner. He's at 60 to 1. Uh, he has two top fives in 11 appearances. Gary Woodland, a major winner at 75 to 1, has two top 10s and five top 20s in 13 appearances. Ricky Fowler, not a major winner. Uh, now how about Ricky Fowler? He has four top 20s in 13 appearances. But he does not have a top 20 in his last nine appearances here with yeah, five yes. missed cuts. I really would like to have somebody ask Ricky Fowler, how did you start out here your first four years with four straight top 20s? And then the next nine years, you've been a complete disaster here. I really like to know how did that happen? That's just so strange, isn't it? I never it seen anything. I've never seen a card like that before. Yeah, it is crazy. I'm looking at it right now. Um, now, what's funny is he's he putts horribly here, which you know he's usually he's been a good putter. Poa is his worst putting service. He's actually oh, a, is it? He's a he's a below average putter on Poa. Okay. He's, you know, well above average on Bent and Bermuda. So he's not a Poa guy. This this I'm a, I'm more surprised he did so well here early in his career because this doesn't just doesn't seem like a good course for Ricky. Yeah, it must have been some had to be a change in something he did with his game, and then it just completely yeah. screwed up his ability to play on this golf course anyway buckley yep. who almost won a couple of weeks ago he's around 90 to 1 by the way burmister uh playing for the first time we haven't talked much about burmister but he's actually been playing pretty well one of these weeks we'll probably have him in our long shot category yeah, <clears throat> yeah he um the stats line up pretty well for him he's long off the tee he's good around the green um same goes for buckley too he's he's a long shot i did look at um because he's another guy who you know um Six in this field off the tee. He's decent on the long approach shots. He's he's. I think the reason I did not bet Buckley is because he's a disaster around the greens. He's hundred four. He's hundred forty first in this field around the greens. So if he misses these greens, it, it could be could be trouble. Uh, Scott uh, Scott Stallings won here in two thousand fourteen. He was runner up in two thousand and fifteen. He's never had a top ten in any of the year. Uh, he's made 12 of his last 13 cuts coming into 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 this event with a runner up at the BMW Championship last year. Davis Thompson is 100 to 1. So we'll see how he comes back after last week. Is that a blip? Is it a hey, I had my shot. You won't see me again for a couple of years or is this the beginning of Davis Thompson's uh really cuz he went from I mean he's already now that 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 second place finish moved him into like the top 70 in the world yeah. ranking. Um, now we get to Ryan Palmer. Now here's an interesting long <laughs> shot that you have on your list. And I understand why horse for the course, five top That's 25s it. in his last five years, including runner ups in 21 and 18. Um, before that nine, of, he has nine appearances, but he had four appearances before that, that were no good. So he's completely opposite of Fowler and 16th last year here. But the problem is, is he's got no top 10 since the last 13, <laughs> but yeah. That did not affect my pick for Chris Kirk at the Sony, which was the same reason I took him, and he almost won, which is, again, I'm, I'm assuming why, hey, any any player that has a horse for the course kind of deal mm -hmm. going for him, don't worry about how they're playing. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, especially when he's 130 to 1. I think, yeah, right. he, I think he's even 150 to 1 at some other books. Yeah. Um, so. I, I don't I don't know if the guy can actually win. Like he, Palmer hasn't won an event since 2010. It is crazy. Um, he had just one. He had one top ten all last year. Um, but he, I mean, he is a good long iron player. He's actually third in this field on those approach shots from 200 plus yards. So that you know, at least explains why he does so well at this course. So um, again, not 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 something I'm in love with. But I'll take a shot at 130 to one. A guy who you know has a couple second place finishes here over his last five. Because that's as close as he's gotten. You said he hasn't won in a while. Uh, Robbie Shelton is my top long shot at 130 to one. He's played here twice, 16th a couple years ago, the last time he played here. Uh, sixth last week, uh, he was 10th not too long ago in one of his recent events to end last year at the RSM in November. And he did have a win in the KFT Tour in August. So overall, the last six months have been pretty good for Robbie Shelton. Uh, is this a player, one of those kind of players that we should be keeping an eye on? I uh, wasn't on my radar until you mentioned him, but just pulling him up now, um, the irons were awesome last week, which you like to see. Um, he's a good around the green player consistently. So you like that at Torrey Pines. And then 
Paula is his best, best putting surface. He's actually a, a below average putter on Bent and Bermuda. He's above average on Poa. So um, seems like a pretty good fit for a guy who is playing well right now. Uh, D, uh, Detry is uh, playing in for the first time. Uh, we've talked about him. Uh, Patrick Rogers. I'd sure like to see Patrick Rogers play, play, you know, get his game going at some point. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And a uh, Schmid, another one of uh, Jan's mm. uh, uh, pre uh, rookie picks. First time playing here, sixth last week, missed a cut at Sony, fourth in South Africa. So that's a pretty good run for Matty Schmid. Uh, he's about 250 to 300 to one. Uh, so he's one of these uh, players that, if they show a little bit of consistency, should mm-hmm. get on our radar for long shot picks real soon. Yeah, I was impressed by what I saw of him last week, especially on Sunday. He was on the coverage quite a bit. Um, ended up gaining across the board at the AMX off the tee approach around the green and putting. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, I didn't get to him this week. It'd be it's a big ask for him to, to win here, you know, in his in his first time at, at Tory. Yeah. But um, especially we'll in see. this event, last week would have yeah. been the kind of right. event to take him. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then I did want to. I know we had a um, comment from one of our viewers and we want to remind everybody that yeah if you have any anything at all any questions comments uh regarding any of the events uh anything at all it could, could come, come out of complete blue could be something we're not even talking about uh just let us know what's on your mind um i'm trying to find out where i had it but you did get the get the uh comment uh last week and that oh, was yeah, regarding about, uh, our battle correct yeah yeah yeah, and I, I um, yeah, we had a commenter, you know, say badly. I think he made a swing change or something and had kind of been rounding into form. Now, he came 50th last week at the Amex. You look at the numbers, they weren't great. The Amex also, you know, only two of those rounds are measured by shot link. They don't even have shot link on the La Quinta course and the, the uh, Nicholas course. So it's only like half of the stats. But, um, yeah, there's I, there's definitely some positives I'm seeing to – Badley's game. He had the seventh place finish at the Sony. He had the sixth place finish in Bermuda in October. So um, definitely someone to keep in mind. Is he in the field? He is in the field. This yes, week. he is. He's like three hundred to one. Yeah, he, I mean he's a he's a shorter hitter, so this doesn't seem like the the spot. I would save him maybe you know for some of these. I mean we got Pebble next week. I don't know if he's in the field there, but he, he could be a, a better. He's a much better fit there than he is here. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. It might have been in. Uh... Uh, could have been in, in one of our fantasy shows then where, where I got it. Um, I'll give it one more. Here's the last one. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I don't know where the hell it went. Anyway, uh, sorry I can't uh, call out your name because I think all I did anyway was just reference it. And uh, I don't remember if I uh, had uh, a name or anything in there of who exactly it was. But you know who you are. And just keep letting us know what's on your mind regarding these types of questions and so forth. And we will definitely, because not only did you reply, but I think, I don't know if Jan replied or not. Cause I'm Jan, not sure. she, she wasn't even sure she had a YouTube account and she found out she did. Cause I told her it's better that, you know, if you want, it's better for you to, uh, do them directly. Um, so I have no idea. I don't think she did, but I have no idea. Because I can't, for some reason, like I said, I can't uh, find out where the heck it was or where it was coming from. But anyway, um, let us know and we will definitely uh, give you our, our, our input on, on one and done's uh, too. Let, let us know if you're in a one and done contest and if you have any, because uh, even though I will say this, if anybody has a one and done question, like, hey, would you go to this guy or this guy? You're, you're, there's no way I'm answering that question. <laughs> and, and, and I wouldn't even expect Jared or Jan to answer that question. We'll give you some positives and, and negatives, and then it's all sure. up to you. you. You make that decision. Exactly. I ain't making exactly. it. Because you know what would happen if we made the wrong pick. Uh, hey, we should talk about our, our golf league real quick, because I'm off to a hot start. In your golf league? Our, the, our golf league, the one we did the draft for. Oh, the fantasy league. You, me, me, you, and Jan, yeah. Yes. Well, that's also because you're, all your players are playing right now. So stop. Don't <laughs> I, get too I, ahead Ron, of yourself. Rom, uh, Taylor Montgomery's on my team. Yeah, let's see. The golf standings. Yeah, you're, you're at 330 points with a win because you got Rom. Yep. Uh, Jan's at 130, and I have 100. 
But I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six guys that still haven't played yet. So uh, it's, early. it's early. It's early. I just and wanted I to bring it up. Players haven't played yet. But yeah, you've got you, you're coming off a Montgomery fifth, a Rom first, and a and a Burns eleventh in the same week. So that's the reason that you. And then you know the win is is over. Is, or this is pretty much as low as a point total as we as we get on uh, as far as our points system. I think it was still two hundred and fifty or something, or two hundred points, something like that for John yep. Rahm's win. And you still have, now Homer will play for the first time this week, but Lowry and Fitzpatrick, by the way, are playing over in um, uh, uh, the Dubai Desert Classic this week. Yep. Uh, McElroy's <clears throat> playing, Hatton's playing, Fleetwood's playing. So we got a, we got a, a bunch of guys that are playing over there. And uh, by the way, McElroy is just, he's three to one there. So how about a parlay of McElroy and Rom? What's that going to pay, like 20 to 1? Uh, I don't know, maybe, like that, maybe yeah. better. But, hey, it's yeah. better than, I mean, better than just taking one the of same, them, I guess. It's a, the same as betting home to win this. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. But McElroy's got nine straight top tens at the Dubai Desert Classic with five top oh, wow. fives, a runner-up, and two wins. <clears throat> wow. Hatton is 12 to 1, and Fleetwood is 16 to 1. Minwoo Lee had a great chance to win last week because he's been doing really well. And I was, and I had money on him, and he screwed up and lost. Uh, he choked down the stretch, and uh, what's his name? Perez hit a a, a par three bunker shot uh, on 17 that went from potentially going down a stroke to, to to gaining a stroke that just completely changed everything late. Um, McIntyre is an interesting player. He's got two top tens and three appearances. We could see him on the PGA Tour full time real soon. Yeah, I, I know he always shows up in most of the majors. Um, I, I love my lefties, so I like I like Robert McIntyre. He just has to be a little bit more consistent. That's mm-hmm. that's the point. Yeah, he's, he's he's young. Yeah, he is. But um, so yeah, so we still have some of these guys that are over there. Uh, but it's early. Uh, look, Victor Hovland hasn't played yet. Uh, for Jan McElroy's over there, and uh, for me, we don't even know what's up with Berger. I have Berger, and I have no idea. Just, no, there's no word on whether he's because he's he's got some events coming up that he's good at. Pebble, Pebble, he's yeah, good at he Honda, well I think. Pebble. Yep. So yeah, he's a good he's a good Florida swing guy. I have not still heard anything about Berger. Yeah, everybody just kind of feels like, oh yeah, he, he should be playing in a week or two, but yeah, nobody knows. So nope. we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Jared, pre- what do we got next week? Pebble. Pebble and then Phoenix, the Super Bowl Phoenix event. And it's the, yeah. see, that's interesting that the Phoenix event, the Farmers Insurance plays Wednesday to Saturday because they don't want to interrupt Championship <laughs> Sunday. But the yeah. Phoenix event just doesn't care. They're like, that's okay. And I, I, it's probably well, because of their crazy Saturday kind of deal they got going on there, which is just insane. Yeah. I mean, plus the idea is that the the waste management ends right before the Super Bowl kicks off. Whereas, you know, we have the NFC Championship game on yeah. Sunday kicking off at like 3 p.m. So that would definitely overlap. So it makes sense. Yeah, I, I will have to be honest with you, though. Pebble, even though it's a beautiful golf course to watch on television, it is not one of my favorite events. And oh, it's, it's another Pro-Am. It's another Pro-Am. So you got all the... And unlike the Amex Pro-Am... The Pebble Pro Am for the first few days, the first two days, you get about fifty percent Pro Am. They just coverage, constantly I mean, show pl- people. Yeah. I don't care to watch. I don't even know who these amateurs are. I don't care. They're not. At least in the old days, you know, Clint Eastwood was out there. You had all <laughs> these like really interesting. You know, uh, even football players uh, five years ago. Now it's like the only person out there is Bill Murray. Is is, uh, is Romo going to play again? I don't, I don't know. mind watching him. He's I mean, on the he's, air. He's, he's he's legit. Is it, well, he won't be on the air next week, right? The week off for football. So he, that's he could true. play. If he he could play. You're right. Maybe he he, he played he played a couple of years ago. Remember he hit that shot off the uh, the carpet in one of the like the VIP tents. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't remember that one. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I I don't like to watch. That's it. I've gotten <laughs> yeah, so get frustrated. Yeah. Over the last few years, it's just, it's just wall-to-wall Thursday and Friday, the first two rounds. It's just yeah. unwatchable. And unlike the Amex, like they were doing – they were doing a great job of coverage. They were, like, they were going 
All right, we're going to Pete Dye. All right, we're going to go here. All right, we're going to go to that course. And they just kept swapping guys and courses. But at Pebble, they don't do that. They just stick to the main course. And then they'll go, all right, let's take a look at what happened. We'll do some highlights from the other golf course. That's, I mean, so you've got two completely yeah. rounds of golf course action that they don't even care. They don't even show you. So if you're not even on that day's main course, you know, you're not going to get any television action for your player. So throw in the fact that they're going to throw hammers will, half the time as well. I will say, I think the PGA tour is improving their TV coverage in general. And more specifically, I think they're starting to realize that guys like us who are betting on this stuff or playing one and dones or, you know, maybe playing DraftKings, um, you know, they're, they're the people that are most invested in. They're the ones watching on a you know Friday afternoon that, want to see more golf shots and don't so. want to see the, the the celebrities and don't want to see all this other other stuff so we'll keep I think an eye on better it. at least that's yeah. next week this week next again week. tomorrow golf tomorrow i can't believe we're saying golf tomorrow but nice. golf tomorrow so get your picks in and and again uh one and done it's m rose or montgomery for me and it's actually it's probably gonna now i've already m is not i'm gonna save him so it's gonna okay. be rose or montgomery for me and who, who, who are you down to? I'll probably save him, too. So for me, it's Finau, Homa, and Jason Day. Two out of three. Two out of three. Yeah. I got I got to cut one still. Yeah. And Jan we'll also see. has two out of four. She gave me her four, by the way. Oh, did she? she which ones were did she give me? Did she give it to me on uh, – where did she – I didn't see did it. Did she give me on email or did she send me uh, – let's see if she gave me an email – but she might have either she might have texted me. I have to check. Let me see here. Uh, she texted me. Let's see. Jan, here it is. She texted me. Her her final uh, choices are Day, Finau, Homa, oh, and Montgomery. Man. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're all in the same group of guys. Yeah, so that's good. So we said we can't just means, all take the yeah, same player, means, though. All right, that probably means those guys are going to be pretty popular picks, though. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to uh, as soon as we we we, we stop this show recording, you're going to have to show me how to check those uh, check the players out because I need to find out sure. how to monitor that correctly. All right, so yep. that'll do it. Please subscribe to the show. And if you like what you see, well, like it and also uh, share it with your friends uh, any way, shape or form. And we'll see you again next week. And uh, we'll have a little bit more time, of course, as they get back to Thursday tea times at Pebble Beach. And uh, best of luck out there, everybody. We'll see you next week.